My background is I studied the sympathetic nervous system and brain. Uh, the sympathetic nervous system is the biochemical center of health in humans, animals, and plants for over 30 years, and it has shared biochemical drivers with the brain. I have patent work in that, and that patent work speaks directly to the space of physical uh, trauma to the head. Okay, now as we've spoken time and time again, and this is the first time we've actually connected on air, um, there right. are a lot of things out there that aren't necessarily kosher. Um, and, I, as, to, as I, I was having a conversation about that the other day. I used to have, and I think, and I know you know this, um, I used to have a big chip on my shoulder. I used to be what I used to call a pissed off sports mom. Um, about all those things. Um, and really, I came to learn some things over the last couple of years, um, one of which being is I might be smarter than I thought I was. Okay, so there's that. Uh, the other thing is, is I think a lot of these people are really trying to do the right thing. They're trying to find some solutions the best they can. Um, but they are not the right answers. And they're often not the right approaches. Um, and that I'm also extremely lucky. I studied the biochemical center of health and brain, so it would make a great deal of sense that I would understand this differently than other people do, right? Um, and so I've made some peace with my pissed off sports mom, and now I'm kind of <laughs> more of a scientist. So, um, but yeah, I appreciate you, yeah, giving me an opportunity to address that. Well, let's, let's take a step back, because as we spoke before, you come at this from an actual reason for being pissed off sports while we're understanding this. So if you don't mind, if you want to, give a little background as where yeah. you come from as far as the-, the As far the as my own uh, mild traumatic brain injury. So um, I studied the sympathetic nervous system and brain for, oh God, 25 years at that point, roughly, or 23 years, um, because it manages pain, moods, the immune system, and addiction. And I have several herniated discs. Um, and I lost all my friends and family for studying all these years because they thought I was either a crazy genius or I didn't know what I was talking about. Um, and I walked away from my work. Um, there's, there's a meeting, which I call a spiritual meeting, that I had that's becoming kind of a famous conversation about me, and that is, it's a little eccentric, but I had a meeting with the dead scientists who I studied. They were all Nobel Prize winning scientists about the quality of my work. And we agreed about the quality of the work and the value of the work and its worth. And I walked away from it. And less than a year later, I was delivered a mild traumatic brain injury um, via my occipital lobe, which is the, more towards the base of your skull, um, from electricity. And so um, I ended up having this whole situation that I even didn't understand at the time, because we don't equate a concussion to the destruction of your health. We don't equate concussion to... Um, seizures. We don't equate concussion to all of these other things that many, many people experience, um, which are now known to be mild traumatic brain injury. So I went through that for about five years. I was actually too poor to buy the raw materials to try to make this stuff, um, which honestly didn't occur to me. My brain was bad off enough that I, you know, hadn't even considered my own work might work. Um, and then I met a doctor who became my doctor, was a professor of medicine at Michigan State University, Dr. Todd Holmes. Um, and my first visit with Todd, he said two things to me. One is, um, you're very lucky to have learned what you learned and know what you know. And two is, you don't have to go through this alone anymore, at which point I bawled, right? So. Well, and, and I think that's the thing that is we've talked about, that the important thing is that we can learn more as we learn more of what other people are doing and, and understand what we debunk and what we don't debunk and understanding that some people are trying, as you said, some people are really trying, but some of them aren't on the think, right path. Right. And, you know, um, and I'm not going to continue to stick up for them. I thought it was appropriate for me to give the balanced conversation, but I think that everybody's addressing this from the wrong perspective. I think it's very easy to see that concussion is a biochemical explosion in the brain. It is not a physiological explosion, right? Yes, certainly biochemistry creates physiology. If there are scientists out there watching, I understand that very plainly. I teach doctors and scientists all the time. But we know that this is a biochemical explosion of the brain. Dr. Romalu's own paper 
page one, I believe it's paragraph two, sentence two says that uh, they witnessed a mild to moderate neuronal dropout in the frontal, parietal, and temporal, neo temporal neocortex, which is the entire brain of pigmented neurons, which are a result of, uh, for in lay terms, which most people understand, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, right? Those are the things that people are deficient when they're on antidepressants. So it's a pretty simple biochemical conversation. It's a pretty simple, simple biochemical solution, in my opinion. Um, but when we look at the market space that would be used for that, which would be antidepressants, antidepressants, SSRI antidepressants, don't actually create dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin in any measure. They hold on to the serotonin you have, which is only a third of the answer, and it's inadequate, which is why there were a number of other drugs that kind of came out for this. Um, I think my favorite commercial, and I've told you this, Frank, is uh, a commercial for a product that says it was created for the 85% of people on antidepressants who are still experiencing symptoms of depression. Um, and the pharmaceutical industry recognizes this at this point. They have uh, dropped their spending to develop new antidepressants by 70% over the last 10 years. So we have a lot of conversations beyond physical head trauma going on here, but the physical tra head trauma is a real, um, it's an obvious conversation. And, and I entered this really from the pissed off sports mom position. I wanted to help our kids. That's what it's about for us. So um, there is something worth mentioning about um, physical trauma to the head. So Boston University, uh, Dr. Bob Cantu made a video about this that people who have pre-existing depression, anxiety, or ADD are more likely to get a concussion, even at a lesser rate of impact. And it's more likely to turn into post-concussion syndrome. Um, and of course, we know that depression, anxiety, and ADD are those things, are deficiencies of those neurotransmitters as well. So we have an answer that answers a lot of things, right? Um, and really, uh, causes a protective mechanism by enhancing brain permeability in the brain through those enhancing those neurotransmitters. And um, of course, then when you're deficient, those neurotransmitters from uh, physical trauma to the head, then it seems obvious what the answer is to that as well. Is it safe to say that one of the things that we're, or the things that we're looking at are more masking instead of solving as far as well, you know, it depends on the thing. I mean, I, I have expertise in all of these things, so I could speak to them item by item. Um, uh, medicines, I don't even think, uh, pharmaceutical medicines at present, I don't even think are able to really mask. I mean, I think when you speak to, you know, one of the things that we do, we do a lot of things differently, by the way, but one of the things that we do differently is we ask every single one of our clients to take our work to their doctor. We okay. don't do that just so it's because it's marketing hype. We don't do that. We do that because we want them to feel safe. And even a bigger reason is we want the doctors to know we exist. All of my colleagues are doctors and scientists, right? So we want the doctors to know that this work exists because they're always impressed by it because of the other things that they can see we do differently, right? So patents and awards and mainstream awards, um, and you know, I won the Silver Stevie Award uh, for Woman of the Year last year for my nonprofit, Purpose Driven, that does uh, work with concussion for people who are, have, um, I don't know, difficulty with finances, right? We've all been there. Um, and so we want to deliver a confidence, not just to our clients, but to their physicians, because we see neurologists that wildly embrace our work. We see doctors that say, where did this woman come from? This is excellent work. So um, we stand at the top in our industry, but we also, we make a really nice bridge for people to have uh, a confidence that isn't always seen in a nutraceutical. And one of the things that we've, we've talked about before is that there was a disconnect between what people are doing and what we're trying to get done and then what your primary care physician or whoever is doing the treatment is like, okay, they, they were in odds. And we we're trying to break down that door. And that's what it sounds like you're doing. Um, I think, yes. And I mean, I don't know if we are trying to break down the door. I think we're, well, that's true. I think Frank, but um, 
I think the barrier with physicians is, especially physicians who have passion for concussion, is um, they're so focused on kind of some existing technology that doesn't toe the line. For instance, there is a technology that is widely, widely used in high schools and in physicians' offices to measure a baseline for athletes before the season starts. Now we've made a copyright. You already know we have patents in the protection. We have patents in the resolution. We have patents in blood and urine tests um, that double as a method of seeing progress. And we have a copyrighted as uh, assessment tool that can be used clinically or at home. And so, um, so we've offered that to coaches as a baseline through Purpose Driven, through our nonprofit, so they can test kids for the baseline. And they tell us that the software, you know, tests for the baseline. Um, what we've learned is, and certainly the people that own the software know this, is that if, a, if one of those kids, one of those players, one of those even adults, has pre-existing depression, anxiety, or ADD, they're going to get a read as if they already have had physical trauma right. to the head that has resulted in a concussion. And so we're seeing from that kids being sidelined, which of course creates a really deep discomfort within the team because these kids have not had physical trauma to the head. Um, and so there's, you know, there's people that are kind of, the truth is I can't shame that, but it's not the right answer, right? So there's, there's some ways that it could be implemented that are helpful, but, um, Overall, it is not the right answer. So when we're looking at things like, um, gosh, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to medical marijuana? Do you want to go to CBDs? Do you want to go to EEG? I mean, there's all these things on our Panacea Biomed website as the scientific reasons why these things are not effective. Um, one of the big ones that's troubling to me and to my colleagues, that one of my colleagues is a doctor who is out of Hawaii, owned his own uh, concussion clinic and uh, physical rehabilitation clinic for 30 years, I believe, um, was the mouth guard. The mouth guard is the reason I stepped into this arena. No question. The okay. mouth guard was disproven well over a decade ago. Um, I'm in Minnesota, so the doctors I've spoken to outside of Minnesota find it laughable, but there's a company in Minnesota that raised almost $10 million in funding, right? Um, if we're talking about the, you know, physical force, you know, there's a lot of companies that have headbands or necklaces or t-shirts or hats or whatever you can wear to measure the speed and velocity and force of the impact as a predictor for concussion. Those are also inconsistent because if you have a biochemical deficiency prior to physical trauma to the head, the probability of you having a concussion is much higher. So speed, force, and velocity of the impact are not good indicators. So all of these companies have already learned this. Um, they, these companies know what I know, certainly, right? This is not just be right. So um, I think it's time. I think it's time that we get to this answer and put this problem to bed for, for humanity, frankly. Well, it, it's, it's the idea of comparing apples to apples, right? It's like, okay, if you are susceptible to something, it doesn't matter what you're doing on the outside of it you're already susceptible to it. So whether it's a, a mouth guard or a head wrap or whatever, you're already there. So Right, and one of the big conversations, I mean, I know that you're aware that the NFL, what did they, what did they market against that concussion movie? It was like $24 billion of marketing, right? And right. there was new pads and new helmets. And, you know, you got chiropractors out here saying they cure concussion when, in fact, they cure whiplash, which can be part of head trauma, but it's not, right? Not, um, we've got helmets out here when there's very clearly a video, and it's all over the place, and I can share it with you if you want to share it with your followers, from the concussion movie in which Dr. Omalu, played by Will Smith, puts an onion in a jar with some water and explains to his fiance that the brain floats freely in the skull. A helmet cannot slow down the impact of that brain floating freely, crashing into the skull. Nor can a mouth guard, nor can, right? I mean, these are, these are just common sense things. And I know that sometimes we can all get caught up in marketing, but 
it's time to come back to some common sense here and, and do the right thing so we can get this nailed. And, and the idea that we're trying to do things with this and with that, and whatever, when it's really what's inside that we've got to deal with. Yeah, and you know, uh, the, you know, as it relates to the sympathetic nervous system and brain, them having shared biochemical drivers of dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, which are neurotransmitters, which are you know prevalent and run the entire brain. Um, there's some bigger things. There's some bigger questions that the world of medicine and pharmacy, pharmaceutical, and so forth are, and science are asking that I know the answers to. So it all connects very beautifully. Whatever whatever we see come out of Boston University or whatever we see come out of. Um, uh, Dr. Malu's work or other people, all of their work always validates our work. So we always know we're on the right path. Um, one of the things I think you'll find of interest is Boston University actually proved that uh, shell shock is biochemically identical to concussion syndrome in the brain. And we have, we have 300 and I think it's 40,000 soldiers coming back from overseas with shell shock. So you know, I think the the arrogance, uh, the 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 egos, the all of the pieces that were involved in this, all the you know, you know, I have a bunch of nightmare stories to tell, right? Um, right. All of those pieces, though, that were involved, I think it's time to, you know, there's a time where you step away from the bullshit and you say, okay, how do we get this done? Realistically, can we stop fighting? Can we stop being childish? Can we stop being? mean and spiteful and petty and all these things and simply i used to joke and i think you might have heard me say this one frank i feel like i was sitting in an auditorium uh with a professor giving a, a presentation and he asked a question i had the answer and they let every single person in the room beat the hell out of me before i got to tell the answer right so. right, right. <laughs> and, and and we've we've all been to that it's like yeah what everybody else doing here uh okay yeah well okay so here here's the the, the 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 dilemma that we've we've talked about before is that we we're facing two completely disparate things how do we solve a problem and then we have another group of people that are how do we make money off of the problem and it's not that they're not they're not trying to solve the problem but they're also operating as a business trying to solve the problem as well and, and this may be a larger thing as far as the medical profession in general, I want to get into that, but we have a lot of businesses that have sprung up around trying to be, lack of a better term, concussion friendly. So where are we as far as saying, okay, look, but that, we all need to be on the same page and figure out what, what do we need to do? And you mentioned something perfect. When you say it's a biochemical thing, I understand that intuitively to say, okay, no matter what we're doing as far as the trauma is concerned, there's something that's more instantaneous on the inside than it is from the outside. Right, now, and, science, and the science shows us that that's factual. You know, speaking about places that are being concussion friendly now, certainly you and I both understand, everybody watching this understands that there's a certain percentage of shysters in the world that will jump on the bandwagon to make a buck and say anything and do anything, okay? But I don't think we should assume that all people are that way. We know that some of these right. people stepped in the ring trying to do the right thing. Um, I think uh, where I have a little difficulty is where the people and the companies that know that they're not serving this space well, are still in it or they're not evolving. Um, and I've direct, I've spoken with a number of those companies and, and offered them the, an opportunity to um, evolve into greatness. And, and they're more interested in where they're at because it's comfortable and they're making money. So that part I have a problem with because that's an ethical pro question. I do always have issues with people who have ethics, uh, ethical questions. Understanding though that business in general kind of tends to rip and run and let's see what sticks. Okay, um, as an entrepreneur myself, um, and I have a company, as you know, and I have a nonprofit, I have both, okay? Um, we're Panacea Biomed, and we are Driven Brain, and we are Purpose Driven, is our nonprofit branch. Um, our website for our product information is drivenbrain.com. But that being said, um, I studied this for me, Frank, so it had to be perfect, right? So right. even when you're a great scientist in a university or a corporate structure, there's usually a lot of pressure to hurry up and get some kind of an outcome. Um, for me, it wasn't like that. I had a natural gift in this. I used to um, 
I was a single mom, so I used to kind of do like my internet dating, and then I'd stay up all night on a Saturday night until the sun came up because I'd find all these connections. I mean, I had a true gift in this for many, many years. So it was my thing. I actually never thought the world would accept the kind of work that's coming out of me and the kind of patents that I'm delivering the world. So um, it's a it's a blessing, I think, overall. And obviously, I understand the trajectory of my journey, but. I think that what I really want to see is I want to see some of these people who uh, do not have it right evolve as people and embrace okay. and let's get this nailed because this is, you know, when I was the ticked off sports mom, I spoke to uh, the NFL Players Association's vice president and he said to me, so Alicia, why are you calling us? Why do you want to help us? And I said, well, honestly, now, don't take this wrong, all the people who hate feminists and all the people who perceive things about women and men and yada, yada, but this was my mood at the moment. I said, well, y'all men, you can screw each other over in business all you want to. In fact, you can screw over your neighbor if you want to, but when it comes to screwing over our kids, I got a problem with it. Um, and I would have had a problem with it even if I hadn't had a catastrophic mild traumatic brain injury, right? So that's really what we got to, you know, rouse around here. And it's a, it's a timely not only answer, but it's a, it's a really good time in our country to talk about ethics. And we have, we have situations where it's become very, very okay to not have good ethics. And that's not a strong foundation for us to move forward with as a country that is the greatest power in the world, right? So. Right, well, you know, it's, it's funny because when we first met, pissed off sports mom was really pissed off. Yes, she was. And it took me a couple really years was. to work through that. Well, but but you still had the same drive. So that was the yeah. thing that I said. Like, okay, you 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 knew where you were going to go, but you, you didn't get past pissed off sports mom initially. So I, it's, I'm glad to see that part. Not that I didn't like pissed off sports mom, but, <laughs> but pissed off sports mom was like, okay, you need to shut up now. I'm going to talk. So I yeah. eventually didn't like pissed off sports mom because. Um, you know, pissed off sports mom on the sidelines gets somewhere, she gets heard, but she doesn't necessarily make progress. And, but what it really took, Frank, is first of all, it took the numbers of doctors and scientists that came through my life that were floored. Like if I go to the doctor, I don't go to the doctor very often, but I went in the spring. And so um, the doctor for a physical, and the doctor said to me, oh, you're a neurobiologist, what do you do? And I said, well, my primary work is this uh, sympathetic nervous system and brain. Oh, you have patents? Oh yes, the simultaneous nerve regeneration of the sympathetic nervous system and their job drops and they wanna know more, right? So it took those people to validate me and for me to understand my worth as a scientist, to get out of pissed off sports mom mode, to heal from what I had been through, to face, I really took, uh, Frank, you heard some of the abuse that I took, the kind oh, yeah. of abuse and the, the death threats and the, the ridiculous stuff that I went through just for trying to stand up and say, hey, can I help, right, was crazy to me. So I was really bitter about that, and I really needed to heal from that. Well, I think it was part of the, the approach and the acceptance of the approach. Like, okay, I know more than you do what you do, but people didn't want to hear that. And well, people had to actually the, see. Well, um, I think at the time, the but, but people had to see that you did know more than you did. Yeah, there is some of that. I think at the time in the medical structure, specifically among doctors, there was in the alternative and integrative space, especially alternative, there was conversation about the sympathetic nervous system. And then it, these things take time to like you know find their way to people conversationally. Yeah. Um, and by the way, not every doctor goes to college because they have brilliance and they want to heal people. So a lot of doctors go because they want to make money. So, right. you know, if they didn't listen in school. They don't know something. I'm considered a 1% scientist, so they wouldn't necessarily know. But so this conversation about the sympathetic nervous system started really evolving. Um, the sympathetic nervous system is sometimes called the fight or flight. It manages all stress in the body and pain, moods, immune, and addiction. And so mainstream doctors we're starting to have this conversation around the sympathetic and the timing was beautiful, right? Um, and of course we have a much bigger answer than concussion, but uh, 
the truth is, is that if we can get people to start talking about it so we can, you know, lead towards other answers and really truly deliver what we are called upon to deliver to science and humanity, that is our objective. But we see no reason to hold something like this off and uh, not let those suffering and not let our kids get the benefit of it. And it's something we talked about before. There is a bigger issue that we're talking about, um, soldiers with... Um, um, post-traumatic stress and, and those kind of things, that there, these are interrelated, uh, interrelated things. So kind of touch on that a little bit, because this is something we talked about a couple of years ago, that it's not just a, tra a traumatic impact, it's a traumatic situation that, right. that these so, things occur. Right, so on our website at drivenbrain.com, we speak about physical and emotional trauma. Physical and emotional trauma come with the same consequences right? So you can have physical stressors or you can have emotional stressors. Um, and when you look at, I'm trying to think of a really interesting case that I can tell you about. Um, let's look at kind of, so we know what happens with the physical trauma in uh, up to the head. And we know that I used to explain it, I'll explain it this way. I used to explain it to coaches this way because they like it this way. And I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to coaches and parents when they hear it this way. So you have Johnny and Joey, right? You've heard this story. And little Johnny's mom, she's a single mom and she has three jobs and she's working all the time. And little Johnny's dog just died and his grandma has cancer and his dad doesn't come around very often and their car just broke down. And He's really stressed out because he wants to see his mom more and he probably already has a diagnosis of depression, anxiety, or ADD because 80% of kids in his situation do. But there's one thing for sure when we understand that the sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight, manages all stress, that little Johnny's had a biochemical, higher biochemical price since the day he was born, right? And then we've got little Joey and little Joey, his dad is a pastor and his mom is a nurse and they do everything together and they eat dinner together every night and he is literally biochemically superior to little Johnny because he has more love, more support, less stress in his life, okay? Now little Joey can actually get uh, a concussion, but it's more likely to heal within a reasonable period of time because of his lower stressors, right? When you take a kid like little Johnny who already has a diagnosis or should have probably, right? Eight out of 10, it just drives me crazy. Um, but that being said, he's more likely to get a concussion at a lesser rate of impact and it turns into post-concussion syndrome, which does what? Puts more stress on the family financially and emotionally. Mom's probably a mess too, right? So uh, emotionally. That being said, little Johnny, I used to tell my coaches this, little Johnny is usually the kid that's a better athlete though, because he's working through his you-know-what on the field right? He's working right. through his stressors right. of life on the field. So it's really important to work with those kids. It's part of why we have the nonprofit because we know a lot of our great athletes come out of poverty. Um, that being said though, uh, both of those are actions of the sympathetic nervous system and the brain because if the sympathetic nervous system and brain are both governed and managed and run by dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, that means if you are bad enough off from physical trauma to the head, a concussion, post-concussion, mild traumatic brain injury, here's what it looks like. Post-concussion now is, if your symptoms don't resolve in a couple of weeks, they call it post-concussion. It used to be six to 12 months, okay? Now, uh, in addition to that, a mild traumatic brain injury uh, very frequently comes with seizures. It comes with destruction of your health. It looks like fibromyalgia. It comes with clinical depression. It comes with the inability to learn new content, inability to manage moods. It, so it has its concussion symptoms, post-concussion symptoms, and the destruction of your health. Um, and women get concussions much more frequently than men because during menses, women's bodies dump all their dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, which makes their brain more vulnerable. So what we've really learned out of all this is that all of these stressors, whether they're physical or emotional or menses, um, dumping a, you know, the loss of the dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, which is the price you pay for stress every day, right? You have to replace it with good food, good diet, good supportive environments. And, um, and if you can't at some point, then you need something to replace it. That's part of why we exist. But um, we know that in, in these scenarios where uh, you're grossly deficient dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, 
that it affects brain permeability. That's what we've been discussing here, right? The strength of the brain. Well, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin, and brain permeability are issues in Alzheimer's and dementia to the degree that uh, post-mortem, after death, a brain that has had uh, Alzheimer's or dementia is grossly smaller than it should be. So we know that long-term, those brain permeability issues uh, affect the brain size. They cause more, depra- uh, more uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. And we know that they come, that if we don't resolve them, that the people who have pre-existing depression, anxiety, and ADD are far more likely to have those diseases when they become elderly. So we have a much bigger conversation, right? But yeah, then, yeah. Now, is it safe? To, I, I know I'm extrapolating here, but is it safe to say that the, the traumatic impact is a trigger, not necessarily the cause. Have I gone too far there? Say because um, oh, it depends upon your biochemical status. For example, but, we're looking at okay. Yeah, but at the that, same time, I want to talk about that. I want to address that because okay. um, the thing that we call tau proteins. Tau proteins actually have a functional role in the brain prior to any kind of head trauma. Okay. Tau proteins are uh, a factor with uh, Louis Tangles in uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. So tau proteins is a conversation that has already been happening. Um, and what really happens with the, these tau proteins is they are they have a little roof on them that's like this, okay? And when you have uh, the injury, there is a biochemical fallout that's kind of a toxic soup of junk, just like when you sprain your ankle, right, that makes it all swollen. And you have to get rid of that, right? That's what um, there, and part of that is calcify, calcium, and that attaches to the roof of the tau protein, which then folds over onto itself because it's calcium. Right. And the nature of calcium is to congregate. So these right. tau proteins congregate and start making this problem happen in the brain. And that's why we're seeing, even with repeated head traumas that are not concussed, in um, high school athletes and, and college athletes that they are already showing symptoms of, of uh, CTE, right? So dissipating those tau proteins is a matter of understanding the biochemical process and the biochemical fallout of an injury. And it's something that we understand very well and we have validation of that work. So we hope that that will um, obviously consistently speak to the, uh, the prevention of other things. And as we're looking at, and again, if I'm, if I'm drawing too much into this, let me know. But as we're looking at, we were talking about PTSD, those are the things that have, you know, all these things have accumulated, then there needs to be, or it doesn't necessarily need to be something, but then something says, boom, now we have the symptoms. Because it's already there because of what you've seen, what you've done, and then something makes it go, and now it goes. I, I, am I reading that right? Is that what we're saying? Because you're talking about Jimmy and Johnny and those kind of things. One is more susceptible than others because of what they've been through. And, and Yeah, but, and, right. But because the biochemical, um, so let's talk about Jimmy and Johnny, okay? So our Joey and Johnny. So Johnny is the kid who's got all the stressors, right? And Joey is the kid who does not and has this very supportive structure. If you enter the armed services and you have pre-existing depression, anxiety, and ADD, you are more likely to come out of the armed services with uh, shell shock or PTSD or some sort of other uh, diagnosis that has gotten much more severe because you didn't have the biochemical strength to handle what was happening to you. Consider the traumas that they're exposed to, right? So they're getting pounded and pounded and pounded with traumas and they don't have the biochemical strength to deal with them. Um, and the same is for little Johnny, right? It doesn't matter if you're little Johnny or you're, you know, uh, you know, John the Marine, right? It's the same difference. Right. Now, people who are not manifest, so we see in that group of people within that group, right? The vulnerable group, we see very consistently, whether you're talking about Johnny, whether you're talking about um, post-head trauma, whether you're talking about the Marine, or whether you're talking about grandpa and grandma, we see that certain um, hormonal structures deliver two types of outcomes. One is a very withdrawn, depressed, can't function person. And the other one is an extremely angry person, a person who cannot manage their anger. It's not at all 
not at all uncommon for someone who has post-concussion syndrome to be in trouble with the law. In fact, if we want to have a, a tangible conversation about our football players and what's been happening to them for the last 30 years, we can explain all of that through post-concussion syndrome and head trauma. So, yeah, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, because I, I was already jumping to that conclusion. The, the, the ones that we've seen that are the, the, the celebrated cases, oh, well, we never would have thought, then you look at closer, like, oh, well, he had these problems before. He had this going on before. He had problems with his marriage. He had problems with his, with the law. He had problems with this when he was in college. We're doing the same thing yeah. with our shooters. Right. Yeah. Right. We're doing the same thing right. with our shooters. Yeah. Right. So we've got the president it, of, of NAMI, which I'm really right. disappointed in her as a leader. Um, we've got her taking a position that mentally ill people are, shooters are not mentally ill. Well, really, they are literally the definition of mental illness, right? Delusions of violence, right? Those kinds of things. Um, I think it's time for us, even through NAMI, and, and I'm not going to be too much of a jerk about NAMI because they don't understand the biochemical conversation either, Frank. Right, right. But it's a time to bring this kind of conversation forward. You know, we have, when we look at social media, we're, we have an incredible effort to normalize mental illness, and now we're going to distance it from the really mentally ill people, which is not okay. Um, instead of delivering, it, of course, no one else has it here, right? So we're happy to deliver it, but delivering the conversation about this biochemistry and what are the reasons that this happens? What's in the food source? What's in the environment? What's in our um, experiences? What's going on, right, that's causing this? Because we have those answers, right? And they just so happen to very, very adequately, um, actually more than adequately, just um, address the head trauma conversation. And so it kind of wrapping up this segment, because we're going to do more of this. Trust me, we're going to do more of this. But Good. kind of wrapping this part of it is, well, we, we, again, and for those that don't know, we've been talking about this on for like five years now. So we're trying to get it. Up to, yeah, yeah, right. But um, looking at it, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make a conclusion of something where there's no conclusion yet. Looking at it, where we're at right now is that what we've discussed so far is that there is more to a concussion than just being concussed. And I think that, there's great, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what yeah. we're missing in the conversation. Right. There's, they're right. There's some, these wonderful variables that need to be understood. And then the whole thing becomes very simple. It's one of the reasons I absolutely, I really, you wouldn't believe how hard I push people to take my work to their doctor. And it's one of the reasons I love educating doctors because they have many more people that are suffering. They'd like to help. Right. Um, right. It's a, it's, you know, we can talk about all the possibilities and make it sound really confusing to some people, right? Because we're off on a number of different path, paths, but the core is the core. Um, it's one of the things I told someone uh, that the reason I'm a good educator is because I always have redundancy built in. So I explain the same thing from a different perspective. Right. That's what you have to do to answer a scientific question. You have to say, this is the answer. And here's the 57,000 other reasons why it's the answer, right? <laughs> Here's all the proof. So, yeah. So, yeah. I would very much look forward to talking. You know, I have plenty to say, Frank. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and and pissed off sports mom even had more. So, but 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 as 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 where we are, you know, people are going to see this and go, "What are these two talking about?" But, I don't know if they will. I think you know one of the things I love. First of all, moms and women are the biggest geek researchers on the face of the planet. Right. Right. When I start explaining this to moms and women, they get it very fast. They may walk away and doubt themselves in a couple of days, but they come back and ask more questions. They get it. Coaches get it from the Jimmy and John or the Joey and Johnny story. Um, doctors get it because they understand the sympathetic nervous system and brain, uh, at least in a rudimentary way. And I think we have a conversation that not only helps everyone to understand plainly, that, but also inspires questions and that also um, makes people feel validated in their situation, right? In their, because we've had, you know, we've had, uh, I would leave, leave you with a quick story. I have a girlfriend that I went to high school with um, and I wanted someone to handle my trade show stuff because I hate doing it. And so I called her and I said, hey, you do trade show stuff, don't you? Will you do this in the evening for me for some money? And she said, sure, but I had, um, 
I had a concussion a couple years ago and I now have seizure disorder and I haven't been able to work. Actually, it was four years ago because she hadn't been able to work for three years. And I said, for God's sake, let's get you squared away first, right? Some of those people, all of those people, for the most part, are on the website. They're, they're customer experiences. But um, those people would have a powerful story to tell you, too, because their lives have been so changed. Um, so, yeah, so we have some things to talk about and see where we're going to go here. But I sincerely and deeply appreciate the opportunity. I have had... Um, I've had a lot of time to write some additional patents this summer and, and really pleased to have uh, one of my first conversations with someone I trust. Well, and, and I think what we've done is, okay, this is, I'm, I live in a world of contradiction, so this is gonna make sense when it doesn't make any sense. We have simplified something that has been tried to be simplified that can't be simplified. Does well, that make sense? Because the reason, but Frank, you can't overlook the fact that part of the reason that this is such a, you know, like I got a lot of resistance and I was pushed off and whatever is because it's a nutritional answer. But I mean, the reality right. of it is, is right. that every day people are eating themselves healthier and the Nobel Prize has been awarded for nutritional discoveries for almost 100 years. So, and people are extremely resistant to the pharmaceutical situation right now. So it's... um. It's not just the thing for me, I think I always address this as a consumer. We really have an internal rule, rule about manufacturing. And that is, if it's not going to be good enough to fix someone as screwed up as I was, we're not even making it. So um, because I'm sensitive to everything, even now, we don't use fillers or flow agents or all that other stuff. But, you know, it's a, it's a huge market that's a confusing market and it, it holds the potential, nutraceuticals hold the potential to act very much like the pharmaceutical industry and their ethics. And that is happening because there's a lot of growth in the market space. So I think the more effort we make to just simply state our ethical case to people and, and you know, give them opportunity to ask questions and educate is, is um, an honor for me to do. It's probably my favorite part anyway, so. Okay, well, let's, let's leave it at that for now because we are gonna revisit this any number of times. Why don't you tell the people where they can find information about you, Twitter, Facebook, all the good fun stuff, because this is a conversation that needs to be continued. Right. The best places to find information about me are um, if you have, you know, for we have a website that is primarily for the medical scientific community and investors called Panacea Biomed. It's P-A-N-A-C-E-A -A -A Biomed.com. Um, we have a product website, which has the letter to you to take your work to your doc, to take our product to your doctor and customer experiences. We've kept it very simple and straightforward without overcomplicating things. And that is driven, D-R-V-N, brain.com. And then we actually have a Facebook page for Purpose Driven. And Purpose Driven is our nonprofit branch to help people who are on uh, food stamp benefits and can't afford our work and have issues that need to be addressed. Um, and Purpose Driven won uh, a Silver Stevie Woman of the Year Award last year for curing concussion and post-concussion syndrome in people less fortunate. And so we haven't set up a website for that yet, but we have set up a uh, Facebook page. And there's a couple other things floating around out there, but those are the best places to, to find information for now. Okay. Well, and to give a little background, um, and I'll, we'll close with this. We have, is it been four years now? We've been kind of bantering back and forth on trying to get yeah, something Yeah, it has yeah. been four um, years. And, yeah. Yeah, one of the parts, and Frank, uh, you know this, Frank, I came out of, because of my situation, I came out of the most extreme possible poverty. And so it has taken an incredible amount of time and effort for me to just find people to support the work, to find people to help us get the product to market, um, right? Among, plus the doctors and scientists and all the other facets that go along with it. So yeah, you and I have been talking since, well, I launched the company in 15. Um, and then yeah. pivot, made a pivot to uh, addressing this issue in what, 17? Yep, summer of 17, um, because mm -hmm. I was a ticked off for its mom. And then, um, <laughs> From there, started meeting the right people. It was the right decision. It was really tough, 
you know, it was really tough to go through, but it was the right decision for sure. So we're glad we have, we've come. Well, like I said, let's, let's leave it at this because again, there's, there is more to go and we, we haven't solved things. So we're going, and, and this is what we talked about when we first started talking like, okay, we're going to find a solution that is workable for everybody. And we're on the path. And there are people that are on the periphery that are trying. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. And as long as we can get everybody involved in the conversation, which sometimes is a tough thing to do, because sometimes they don't want to be part of the conversation. They want to be part of their solution. Well, it's not their solution. It's our getting it done. So if we can keep doing that, I think we're in good shape. Great. Okay. So much for your yeah. time. Okay. Well, thank you again. Well, thank you again. All right. We'll we'll call that a day.